What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over the question, length of the longest consecutive subsequence. Now, in this question, the input is going to be an array like this, and what they want is an integer output of the longest uh, subsequence that <coughs> contains consecutive integers. So, uh, for example, 10, 11, uh, el this one, this is a subsequence. 11, 10, 12 is a subsequence, however, the subsequence itself contains increasing consecutive integers. So 10, 11, and 12. But the actual subsequence of the array is 11, 10, uh, 11, 10 12. That's the little caveat. So <coughs> how do we maximize this? Well, this approach is going to be using a set because a set has fast addition and lookup time, search time. and the core trick behind this problem is that anytime we're visiting a number, that number is going to um, first see if there is a immediately smaller number. So say we're, there's a, a 20 here, right? Say if there's a 20 in the array, uh, and uh, 20 is going to check in the set if 20 minus 1 is 19 is in the set. Basically what this means is if I'm a number and there's one number smaller than me, I'm going to let that number be the one that um, builds the subsequence. So let's see what this looks like for this problem. So 11, 10, 1, 4, 12, 2, 3. Now, uh, say for example, so when we start out with 11, 11 is going to first check, is there any number smaller than me? and it's going to see 10. It's going to see that 10 is part of the set, so it's going to let 10 do the, uh, be the first number of that subsequence. Now, don't get confused about the order. Uh, all we're checking in the set is does it exist or not, because let's see what happens if 11 tries building itself. 11 is going to see, uh, say 11 starts the subsequence. It's going to see it has 12, right? Uh, 11, which is 11 plus 1. But 11 plus 2, 13, is not there. So the length of this, if, if 11 starts it, is only going to be 2. However, if it notices that there's a 10, which is 1 below it, it's going to let 10 do it, because then 10 can say 10 plus 1, 11 exists. 10 plus 2, 12 exists. 10 plus 3, 13 does not exist. But my total length if I let 10 start it, it's going to be 3. Uh, that's essentially the core logic behind it. And we'll see how efficient this approach is when we get into the code. Now, uh, to begin, we'll say int longest given an integer array of nums. And we create a set of integers. is a new hash set. Um, and this one is just going to be loaded with the numbers from the nums array. Mm, I. Now, we're going to iterate through this I, uh, this nums array once more. And we're going to see if set doesn't contain i minus 1. So in the beginning, we start with 11, right? 11, uh, 11 is uh, here. 11 is going to see, is there 11 minus 1? 10. 10 does exist in, in the set. So it's not going to do anything. Then we move on to 10. Now, 10 checks 10 minus 1 is 9, is not in the array. So we are going to start building a subsequence, logical subsequence, with the 10. So we'll say int j is equal to i. And this is a while loop, while set.contains j increment j so let's see what happens when 10 is the one happening it 
So initially 10 is going to be I and 10 is going to be J. Now um, J++ plus plus, it becomes 11. So J goes here. Then it, set, it contains 11. Then J++ plus plus, 12. 12 is contained here. Then J++ plus plus again. 13. 13 is not contained here. However, J is still equal to 13. So now we stop incrementing J. And then we say, like, um, OK, this one wants a result answer, right? So int result is going to be integer dot min value. And um, we just say result is going to be the math dot max of existing result or um, j minus i. Now you can see that i is the initial number that started it, and j is going to be the number that is just missing. So the difference between these two is going to be 3. So result at this point is going to be 3. And uh, we just close the if loop and the for loop. And then at the end, we return result. But we're still not done. Right now, because of 10, our result is 3. Then we move on to the next one. <coughs> We go to 1. 1 is going to see that there's nothing less than 1, right? So it's going to try creating an array. So 1 is i, and it's also going to be j. Now, is it going to try incrementing? 2. 2 is there. 3. 3 is there. 4. 4 is there. And then 5. 5 is not there. So. Uh, j minus i is going to be 5 minus 1, which is 4. And then res is going to get incremented. So it's going to get swapped to 4 because 4 is greater than 3. And that's how we return result. Now, this problem, uh, we still keep going, but essentially it's solved. Because after 1 does its job of uh, 1, 4, 2, and 3, even though we continue iterating over it, each number is going to see that it's not going to perform this operation because four has a, a decrease. Four is has a number smaller than that. Twelve has a number smaller than that. Two has a number smaller than that, and three has a number smaller than that in the array. So that's essentially all this code is, and um, the runtime complexity is going to be uh, O of n because we're just going over the array one integer at a time. So O of n is the runtime complexity. That's essentially how you solve it and get the uh, longest length. Uh, thanks for watching.